TLDR membership program for just one ninety nine. The International Criminal oh. Court has issued arrest warrants for former Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigo. Yeah, pretty interesting. Huh? It, it is pretty interesting. Onions, peppers, tomatoes, and larvae. Inside this orphanage in the Democratic Republic of Congo's capital Kinshasa, children are being fed thick white worms known locally as pose. Edible insects, pussy. including larvae, are increasingly being They're studied giving kids their pussy. as a sustainable alternative form of protein to meat. And some say they could help address malnutrition in the West African nation. Okay. Around one quarter of Congo's 99 million population is facing a food crisis. And one half of all orphans are suffering Talking about food from malnutrition. And bugs are gonna make food. That's according to the World Food Programme. Kinshasa-based non-profit organization Farms for Orphans provides protein-rich larvae to local orphanages to help feed deprived children. Agricultural engineer Francois Lucardi runs the organization. On a fait un constat qu'il y avait un sérieux problème de malnutrition et de carence en éléments nutritifs auprès des enfants, spécialement ceux de moins de 5 ans. Alors on s'est dit, voilà, comment on peut faire pour résoudre une fois pour toutes, pourquoi ne pas mettre en place une solution durable qui oh. puisse répondre et like, aux problèmes like de malnutrition des weevils. enfants like et aux weevils. problèmes environnementaux à la fois. On s'est tourné vers les insectes. The UN Food and Agricultural Organization says insects can be a rich source of fat, protein, vitamins, fiber and minerals. Some can be used either for human consumption, like in Congo, or for animal feed in Benin. Farms for Orphans produces up to 660 pounds of palm larvae per month and provides okay. meals so to several basic, hundred children just... per quarter. The organization received funding from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for its initial research and I can explain it. I can explain Lucardi it. hopes to produce enough... Bill explain. Gates! So, let me explain. So, like, um... I actually these basically these are like coconut weevils but they're in palms instead okay right so like w what you do is like um they get them before like any organs develop inside right so all that's in there is like the processed plant matter whether it be the coconut or the palm right oh, interesting. so really they're just like organic gushers but the head is still like has an exoskeleton and is, and is crunchy. So you'll see a lot of people when they're eating coconut weevils in, in uh, Southeast Asia, they'll like cut the head off. No, they'll hold the, the, the they'll hold it by the head with the chopstick and bite everything and leave the head behind. Ah, interesting. I, I don't imagine they, they would taste all that bad, honestly. No, no, they're fine. I've had them. Like, because I've, I've had witchy grubs and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lobby to sell commercially. Just, I think the same thing, thing, wood grub. Size donations to orphanages. Her team currently supplies four restaurants in Kinshasa, where palm worms are becoming increasingly popular. The organization is also studying how to grow the larvae and harvest the larvae sustainably in laboratories. But some critics say it would be difficult to ramp up production to a commercial scale due to a lack of adequate resources. Several studies say commercial scale insect farming could also pose food safety risks, as some require feed crops that could otherwise go directly towards human consumption. Well, you know, you know, Mexico eats more bugs than any other nation. And uh, more than a quarter so like, of a man. Um, the the big popular thing is these mexican ants right mm -hmm. and like um they have the fucking uh formic acid in them right because yeah. they're so like they're like spicy in a weird way i think you've shown us this before but the other thing is is that they take the ant eggs huh. and that's and that's like it's like a mexican omelet or something mexican yeah. caviar is what they okay, call it uh, interesting but it's like they're like supposedly really good like they taste like buttery z bugs z bugs 
They oh. make you eat salads and they're not very delicious. Zee bugs. All zee bugs. They're too big for this guy, though. Americans now claim no religious affiliation. That's according to the Pew Research Center. That group now comprises the largest block of Americans and follows decades of declining attendance among white Christians as well as black Protestants nice. and Jews. Judy Woodruff reports that for white Christians, there's also been a growing political divide within some faith communities. It's her latest installment of America at a Crossroads. <laughs> Across America, each week, a familiar sound. Christians of different denominations gathering to sing, worship, and find community. Yet, in a growing number of places in the country, especially away from major cities, that sound has been growing softer. And in some, like this American Baptist Church in southern Illinois, which has existed in some form since 1868, it will soon grow quiet altogether. I've done a handful of baptisms while I've been pastor here, but I've done over 25 funerals. So we're just not offsetting the losses at this point. And once you get to a certain point, it's almost impossible to pull out of the nosedive. We've had a bunch of birthdays because we haven't been really meeting uh, the last couple of weeks. For more than 17 years, Ryan Burge has been the pastor of First Baptist Church ABC in Mount Vernon one of the many mainline Protestant denominations that once dominated the nation's cities, towns, and countryside. Yet, since 1972, even as the country's population has grown over 60%, the proportion of white... This is not what I picked. Yeah, but I'm in this, interested because it's about actually no. This, sorry, this was my bridging video. I'm like, I'm confused. I'm like, so we can start killing like, the oh, this No, is Michael, tonight, that's not what this is about. This is my bridging video between the next topic. Americans attending churches like these or even L's. identifying as a Christian <laughs> has fallen precipitously. Good. This church will close for good yeah, in July. Religion is just not a central part of life for lots and lots of people. Today right. in America, about 25% of people report weekly church attendance, which puts us on par with a country like Italy. We were right. above 40% at okay, one point. Okay, Italy's Amongst super Catholic. 50% were weekly mass attenders in 1972. It's 20% today. So we're seeing a decline in- We can't scam silly people to give us money for their donation tins. Um, so we need more people to be indoctrinated. Yeah, but so this guy has it. like eight people at his church. He's not really <laughs> scamming anyone. No, I know, but that's like, that's the vibe I'm getting. Is like, oh, we don't have money. We need money. Can we see and the outside of his church again? Did it look like an old country buffet? Not just Protestant, but also The Catholic old people well. think Jesus they're going into the country buffet and that they're like, wait. Where's the food? <laughs> Pastor Burge is also a political scientist teaching at Eastern Illinois University, okay. where he studies the intersection of faith, politics, and the data behind it. Describing these broad trends in his 2023 book, The Nuns, about the growing share of Americans who identify as atheists, agnostic, I think that's a pretty or nothing in particular. Interesting and clever title because it's like it is. nuns are also like a religious thing. Yes, that is a very clever title. Ninety percent of Americans used to identify as Christians in 1972. It's about 65 percent today. You mean when Billy and Graham was up there white. talking about how Hitler had the right ideas about the Jews? Mm -hmm. That era, Christians that's now the Christians half. we are saying, you know, we used to be real Christian, you know, and Billy Graham used to be around. The nuns have gone from, N-O-N-E-S, have gone from 5% of America in 1972 to almost 30% of America today. Uh, amongst young people, it's over 40% of America. Wow. So it we're facing like an entirely different religious pot. landscape today <laughs> than we did even 30 years ago. What is your best understanding of what's happened? Of why? Just ask the question, why should I care? Well, what's interesting That's... is like um, Korean churches, mm. right? They still have that. It's more, it's like they're very political, but it's also like, you know, it's like the Mahjong stereotype where like <laughs> all the drama happens around the Mahjong table. <laughs> Why fewer and fewer Americans 
feel some connection with a church or with a faith? I think a lot of it is that Americans are anti-institutional now. And if you look at data and trust in institutions, uh, sure. we don't trust anything today as much as we trusted it 40 years ago, whether it be banks why. or unions or the media or religion. They're wow. not seeing the value that religion you think, plays. You think in part of it might be what? Capitalism? Hmm. Maybe. Uh, that's definitely part of it. All right. And it's then very like surprising that it took trust 3, in institutions. For to realize you know? And this is religion. the thing. This is like because like, America is so evil. Mm. And like they don't hide it, right? And because we actually have like the First Amendment, people are just like, "Hey, did you all see that?" And everyone is allowed to say, "We did. We indeed did look up and saw it." So, of course, trust in the institutions are down. Like the CIA tested sarin on Americans. Mm -hmm. Like, fuck the institutions lives and they're also thinking and i think this is the thing that i push back against the most that religion is only about belief religion is also a social enterprise you come here you sit next to people who are different than you you learn how to no, volunteer you, don't. you learn how to run no, you learn how cut to back to his attendance about... at mass they were all the same lady they hmm. literally were identical ladies they cloned her The Bible, but you also learn that other people are good people. Bible. Yeah. How about some pulled pork? Just a few miles away, some of those volunteers are helping the needy at this once a month this food This is pantry. just what old people Angels do. Are... <laughs> the fucking Fine. wifey, right? She's like, mm. um, you know how like uh, you, the girl in Fight Club, how they go to all the meetings and stuff, even though they're not part of something? Yeah. So she likes to do that kind of stuff. But she's obviously, like, not insane. Yes. So the other day she was like, I'm, like, a, already, like, an old lady because all I do is volunteer and, like, I'm not working right now. <laughs> this is an old lady thing. It was pulled pork. A block a, a block a, a block a pig. Where they provide free food, clothing, and help with expenses. The population of Jefferson County is shrinking as it ages, and its politics have swung further to the right. In 2000, voting 54% in favor of George W. Bush, uh -huh. to nearly 72% in favor of President Trump in 2020. Those are two very Our different... Here joined from across yeah, local denominations. Both of those are very different political parties. Which one is the right one? Mm -hmm. Which what do you mean by swung more right? Is Trump more right than Bush? I would this say no. I would say no. Bush, especially if if we're applying uh, the whole like Christian conservative aspect of things, like mm -hmm. Bush was the evangelical president. Trump is just yes. a dipshit. Their mainline denomination in steep decline. All the United old Methodist Church has fallen from 11 million people in 1967 to half of that today. And in just the past two years, lost about a quarter of its churches over issues surrounding same-sex marriage and LGBTQ clergy. Wait, you mean, you mean churches are closing because the Baptist Church are cunts? I guess we found their problem. Jay. Stop the being Lord's table is the place where the distinctions between rich and poor, powerful. You can't simultaneously exclude people from your church and then complain that your church is losing members. I have no sympathy. Fuck you. The, the, the powerless uh, are in the picture from the website. The kids literally using, I think, resolve on one of them. Oh, that's funny. The other one doesn't look like resolve, though. They have a seat, though. They're not a nonprofit. No. Recent Sunday morning, though, First Is United Methodist pews were mostly company for that the, one girl worked at. You sent me. She works at this one specifically. Yeah. Because this one, because it said she was in Italy. This doesn't look like Italy. I no, know. I know. It says uh, project manager at this place. Uh, so, but does she? She thinks she works remotely. Maybe. It could be a previous job. I don't know. All her entire page is in Italian, so. Yeah. 
Don't know. Full with more joining online and a full choir leading the congregation, including Keith and Cheryl Cox. They were all very old and A wise. decade ago, Keith, a retired choir director, and Cheryl, a former German teacher and school administrator, moved from northern and Illinois to the stopped. family farm here. The first church they joined closed, with too few members to sustain it. Yeah. The next one, a Methodist church close to home, didn't align with their views on supporting border. Why do you need a, a building? Just do it in your bedroom. Just do it in your fucking lounge room. Okay, if you're talking Freaks like a Protestant now, bedroom. I don't want to hear any of this talk. No, but like, why Why not just do that? Why do you need a, a specific church building? Uh, because cathedrals are part of a cultural sector, right? That's cathedrals cathedrals improve your city's culture just like mosques do right they do okay. they're they're good they're nice buildings bro sure and you can go this is our historic cathedral if you say you know? so. and then if Maybe you're Protest if, if you're protestant you're like here where are the back of this old country buffet <laughs> you know there's a little break room in the back they let us they let us borrow it today like, uh, uh, like the ability to like build temples, even not even like, like some of those are the only buildings that like still exist, you know, like mm. Athena, right? The temple of Athena, sure. the temple wall in like Israel. Like shit. Yeah. I mean, it imp I mean, Notre Dame, it improves the culture. Mm. Sure. That one's in Melbourne. If it gets, it, but it's it, it improves it even more if they get abandoned and run down. Then they get spooky. True. I like the spooky church. The spooky ones are cooler. This one is not spooky. King in, in the, the castle. Town. King in the castle. This one. This one is literally in the center of the city. I used to, I'd have done a few like um, filmed at the cathedral and stuff. Mm. And they all have, it's all remote cameras that are like installed so we can just like set up shots in advance at like crazy uh, angles think, and shit. That's cool. It's fucking it's um, actually really to do, fun to work at the They used to do a, um, talking about cultural, cultural impact of like cathedrals and chapels and shit, right? Um, there was a thing that they used to do in Australia uh, with live music. Um, when Lady Gaga was starting was basically when it finished uh, called Live at the Chapel. Where it was literally just uh, maybe a hundred people inside a church building, and a massive artist would play music, and obviously the acoustics would be fucking amazing. I'll send you Lady Gaga's one after we finish this, but it's fucking. Oh, I've seen it. Awesome. I know what you're talking Which, about. Paparazzi. I think you've shown it to me. I I, I may have. It's great. <laughs> but like that, that I think we should repurpose. Uh, church buildings for yeah it's concerts. actually really good like there's that one um the daughter song that's from it's from the soundtrack from the life is strange games that the depressed girls mm. play okay but it's that, that game. she's yeah well because you're not a depressed girl sure. um but yeah she sings in the cathedral on that song and that song oh, is cool. like fire I, i've yeah. sent it to you before yes order migrants through umcor the church's relief agency, and the decision to close churches during the COVID-19 outbreak. When I was on the church council and I heard the church leaders in that council um, being very unhappy about the fact that Umcor was, was helping migrants and mm. that Scum. the bishop was a terrible person for trying to keep people safe, um, that truly troubled me. And so I was not as interested in being a part of that uh, church at that point in time. Now, Keith they, and Cheryl... The church wasn't racist, so I left. <laughs> play twice a week to sing the, in the church choir believed in helping worship. human beings that weren't white. Classic fucking Protestants, bro. At first United Methodist in Mount Vernon. It's the best 
45 minute drive that I have on a regular basis because I do feel uplifted when I go to the church. And I can't say that that's been true even at the other Methodist churches that I've been to. And recognizing People, people like wifey go to chiropractors by choice. So <laughs> if this guy wants to drive 45 minutes to go to a Protestant church, cause it makes him feel better. Sure. There's like, honestly, I would say there's more scientific evidence backing up God than the industry of chiropractors. <laughs> <laughs> that politics was now a part of the church set of beliefs. How did that make you feel? I think politics has invaded uh, schools and healthcare and just about every aspect of our lives. So I shouldn't be surprised that it is invading in some ways um, in the church. But I just want people to help you feel uncomfortable. Absolutely. Singing alongside Keith and Cheryl Cox is Seth Calvert, who was drawn to this church first by its music, then by its message. The Lord's table is the place where gay and straight and every other orientation in between can discover and receive the gift of God's life-giving oh, grace. Did he, he left the church it honestly, because they you know, wouldn't kind of feed rocks migrants? My world, but there are people who are Christians. Is this the same church? Who are actually open-minded that's the reasoning is they're going calvert lives in mount vernon with his husband brandon he was raised southern baptist felt increasingly maybe maybe you misinterpreted let's go back reviews on supporting the decision to close to home didn't align with their views on supporting border migrants through umcor the church's relief agency and the decision to close church okay so they wanted to to help migrants the church didn't and then they shut down during covid so they bailed is what i'm getting uh, what i'm getting okay because it sounded like that they didn't like the church because they supported migrants but now that i hear yeah it, no i think it was the church that didn't okay i think so, is what, what so I'm he's getting. wants to so that's even better than the chiropractor now <laughs> errol cox is just about every aspect of the reasoning is they're going to- Calvert lives in Mount Vernon with his husband, Brandon. He was <laughs> okay. raised Southern Baptist, but felt increasingly uncomfortable yeah, with that branch as he that. aged, especially as he heard things from the pastor that conflicted with his realization yeah. that he was transgender. One of the examples that actually was the reason I ended up Based. leaving that church Based. was he, he was going on a Way to go, about, PBS. You know, how trans- you PBS found the it, as per usual. You found is that a is that like a, a, a the shape up behind her looks kind of dick shaped, huh? On the right hand side, yeah, 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 a little bit. Trains rights anyway, is all that and all that. Way and to go, PBS! Said, finding the most interesting niche public interest piece you could <laughs> about the decline of churches. Like, way to go! Like this is this is. Fantastic. Imagine, imagine if fucking capitalist news networks put this much effort in. <laughs> oh no, they need to do it fast and cheap, like a fucking mm-hmm. shin fabric. Crazy, a crazy. I can't believe the civil rights. I can't movement. believe the faith in institutions has declined. <laughs> it was a mistake because now we have the gay rights movement, and it was like that's wrong. You were hearing that, and then what were you thinking? Like I, I had been taught, you know, if if you see things going wrong, you always stay there and try and fix them. And that's what I was trying to do for years and years in that church. And then it got it's so crazy it's like, because like they're no literally way mandated that they can't no way. like have a political agenda. Right. Mm-hmm. But yet like the, so like my my foundation of my founding philosophy and what I think should be the golden rule of journalists, a lot of people are not taught it anymore, is that the golden, like, you know, it's like the oath, mm. uh, oath of office or the Hippocratic oath, except it's not a real oath. And it's that it, you have to inform the public of all the facts so they can make informed decisions because mm. it's the public's right to know all the facts yes. so they yes. can yep. make informed decisions. Mm-hmm. So it's, 
it's by doing good journalism, doing good and, and actually staying out of like your biases and presenting things from multiple perspectives. It's literally preserving people's natural human right to information. Mm -hmm. So the fact that the media today is against this, they're against informing the public. They're literally depriving us of civil rights. Mm -hmm. You Maybe just need to tell the truth. Is gonna be and yes. look what happens. You get you become a commie because you watch PBS because hmm. they have they're forced to tell the truth. And that's what happens. Well to yeah. help these people see that what they're saying and doing is wrong. It's almost like we've become a safe haven for refugees from other traditions and even other United Methodist churches who have felt it's excluded. So Based as Victor fuck. Long it leads really his congregation. Wait, you, mean, wait, you church. mean this church is successful is minds, and the other ones hearts, aren't? Open doors. Mm, what's so, the difference? It's almost like if you don't extracite people, yeah, yeah ostracize, 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 ostracize people, ostracize. they'll come. Yeah, it's crazy, right? It's like, Who knew? yeah, well, the country, you know, it's everyone's coming in. It's getting more diverse. But, you know, we just haven't changed. And nobody's mm -hmm. following the faith like they used to in the 70s when Billy Graham was around and talked about killing Jews like Hitler did with the president. Really happened. Look it up. Dude, Mount Vernon, they made it look like it was fucking country Virginia. It's Mount Vernon is like right outside of D.C. It's it's. <laughs> I mean, it's Mount Vernon is pretty rural. It, Get fucked. It is pretty rural for like obvious, like the city itself. Pretty it's, rural. Yeah, but no, no, no. I know the city. Pretty itself, rural. <laughs> I know, bro. I've been there. <laughs> but that's the the thing is, is that um, it gets rural the further out you go. Obviously. Yes. Oh, it's right on the border of Maryland too. Yeah, it's literally it's it, but it's um. Neat. I I've been I went to George Washington's slave plantation there. Oh really? Yep. Is it the Woodlawn Manor? Oh, see, so you, you know that's Mount Vernon down there. I don't know. That looks like a golf course to me. And a baseball diamond. Reclaim the golf courses. The churches they often come from are very rigid and narrow, and I know some have come from churches where. Yes, I think you're right. I think we're both idiots. What? What? <laughs> okay, that looks better. <laughs> They're talking about Mount Vernon, Illinois, I believe. Yeah, we're both we're both idiots. Oh, okay. Uh, it's right here. Pretty so, rural. Yeah. rural. It's probably an hour and a but half. But also, away. like, were, were you zooming in on Baltimore or Washington? DC. Yeah, that's. But yeah, I yes, okay, this is rural. Yes, okay. Hey, look at Nashville. Some funny fucking names in America. Weird. Politics was really the theme of, of the message they heard. And they're looking for a safe place where they're not told what to believe, uh, where they have uh, freedom to ask questions and room to grow in their faith. On the day we visited, Long delivered a sermon hey. on the importance of unity. I like this guy. This guy I can get behind. Provided <laughs> he's this is knowing only what I've seen so far. Unity. Lord's table is the place where Democrats can kneel alongside Republicans. Where else in the world are you going to see that? I just Why felt like it was bring the it right up? time. I just don't understand. Be of that. Because the perfect the setting. News crew is there. Uh, you reckon it's specifically for the news? When we come together as one. Oh, uh, you're coming with people, huh? It's the right time. You're harvesting the jizz. Time, do you think? Because. All the other voices that get, get airtime in the church are about division and uh, how do you, who's how right do you who's... find a, a thing like this, a story like this? 
from one church, a couple who's left one multiple to find this one specifically, or did they find this church and ask people what their story? The thing were? is, is that this would be like if everyone operated with the same standards, like PBS would be like under par. Yeah. Like the stories that would come out like daily on other networks. Even yeah. Cause it's even like <laughs> you really you really need it it really comes down to how many people have you got in your in your network. Like you know how like um like TikTok actively makes Instagram reels worse? Yes. Yes. It's so it, it's like it really it's does. like the TikTokification of news is what's happened because of capital. Yes. Yeah. Yep. That yeah. Twenty four hour news cycle. That's exactly what it is. All because of that fucking plane. <laughs> it's wrong, and we need to leave. Was that the first time round the clock coverage happened? Yep. I know. I learned it in school. Really? Okay. Interesting. Yep. Because I, I didn't learn that was the first instance of it, but that yep. makes total sense. I believe it was Theon and uh, <laughs> the twenty-four hour around the clock filming like the ocean or some shit, being like, yeah, and then they still they haven't saw how found much money it. They made. Yeah, like yeah. imagine doing it with the fucking sub that went missing. <laughs> like they're just out there for twenty-four hours. Unbelievable. Still haven't found People it. People need to hear that. I believe Christ calls the church to unity. In spite of our differences, you know, it's not uniformity, but it's mm. it's unity. Yeah, okay. I don't agree, but I can get behind it. Okay, no, no, no. This guy is like, uh, he's like a, you know, one of them Salafis, you know, uh. where they're like, you know, the radicals. We need to bring them in too, you know. Oh, yeah. you reckon? Oh, uh, you know, that's when I hear unity and I'm talking about religion. All I'm thinking about is that caliphate, bro. <laughs> Fair enough. No, I'm body of Christ. Long says his congregation includes Republicans, Democrats, and everything in between, a hallmark of mainline Protestant churches. But that is becoming increasingly rare, according to Ryan Burge. For a long time, we always thought that religion was the first lens and politics was downstream of that. So, I, you know, I, what party I voted for, I looked at the Bible, I think about my theology, how I view the world. Oh, no. And so, I, you know, I thought that religion was the first lens and politics was downstream of that so i you know I, you're a dickhead yeah it's, that's how the fate that's how these christians actually do like like if if we god really, has to be first like if we're really thinking about it culture politics religion at at an at a stretch religion is culture religion is second right religion is culture I disagree. It's, it is, though. I think religion as an institution should be separated from culture. It's not, though. It's part of culture. Only because they force it to be. No, it's just because people go to church. I, I just, I fundamentally disagree. If we look at the people getting given a choice to go to church or not, how many people are going to church? 30% of the country are down so, from 70? The ones who, where church is part of their culture. Yeah, but you you're overlooking the fact that you, I'm you saying get, that it's forced yeah. in. It's not it's it's uh not a natural part of culture. Religion is not a part of culture unless it forces itself in there, unless it's specifically uh, placed in there. I don't know. I think when we look archaeologically at cultures, religion is one of the most important things that can tell us about that culture. It's like inherently natural. I, feel, I just, culture. I just, I just so disagree. I just feel like that's such a narrow thing to view culture as. To say religion is culture is uh, just so. What do you uh, mean narrow, narrow to view culture as? Culture is more than just religion. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying is to to view religion as culture to tell you about how a, a group is is very narrow minded in the sense that there's clearly more so we're we're missing aspects because people want to focus on religion so much in the last three thousand years um that's what 
the archaeological evidence is there for. Sure. But it, right know. now, we are proving that religion is a small, insignificant part. Mm -hmm. And it will continue to become even more insignificant as we go. Mm -hmm. Because as as technology but, and but science becomes easier to at the same the, the time, at the same time, you look at Sethians and they're like, you know, they like have like a more druidic, naturalistic type of thing. You know, modern day Sethians would think rocks are magic. Sure. And and those crystal mommies are a culture. Sure. And it comes from a lack of understanding. Okay. And a forcing the religion forcing itself to be the culture. I mean, I think I think I just, I just think it's choose. silly to be like if if like they already cited how few people are going to church weekly, right? It's, a, it's Which is my point. With, no, listen to me. It's on par with Italy, right? So it's not actually forcing itself. The people who want to engage with it, that view it as part of their culture and their identity, do. And the people that don't, don't. Like, music is culture. Religion is culture. Art is culture. Sure, under the umbrella of culture, sure. Yes, that's what I'm saying, though. But I'm talking specifically about the things that he just said, where it's religion to politics. I come right. from an Irish Catholic family, and I can tell you right you're, now, you're, Irish, you're focusing on the wrong thing. Irish and Catholic thing are intrinsically linked. You cannot separate them. You're focusing on the wrong part. It doesn't matter if you're not Catholic. It's still you're part of your culture. focusing on the wrong part. He's saying that religion influences politics. Culture mm -hmm. influences politics. Culture, I would say culture influences religion. Um, partially, yeah. The way up, the way up. What I'm live, saying is, is that it depends, and people all don't see the world like you do. Is what I'm telling you. I understand, but what I'm saying is that religion, the the act, like religion as it is in a culture, Christianity by its nature forced its way into most of the world. Would we have Protestantism moronic specifically Christian culture without missionaries? forcing it in an imperialistic way onto native cultures. Would it be the same? No. The culture would be completely in, uh, independent of it. And I would say that what we're seeing is uh, a trailing off of religion's control of culture. And that's why we're seeing such a change in culture right now. And that we are seeing religion lose its control over culture not so much that it is culture that it had control over it is what I'm saying. And that we should not be seeing, we should not be viewing the culture as it is right now in the aspect of religion. We just shouldn't be. In the West, at least. What about the Jippos? <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm surprised you went went to to them because I'm like if we're if we're really talking about religion culture, I was, it, Mormons like Middle you East. look at the, no I was gonna say the Mormons right Utah cool. Utah is a fucking enigma it mm. is an alien fucking planet there the like it's fucking weird because yeah. of the Mormons like they definitely have formed alongside. Like, and you look at, like, yeah, you even look at the honest arts in Fallout and how much, like, that preserving of Mormonism mm. influences the cultures that come up in Fallout. Yeah. I think, I think when, and also, like, Mormons tend not to actually be very political as well. They, like, basically say that don't, don't participate in politics. The only, only talk about our cult and get involved with our cult. I mean, that makes sense to maintain the cult, right? Yeah, yeah. That's how it works. But then also, like, um, at the same time, like, you brought up them, the church extinguishing natives, right? Well, they're, mm. those natives are still practicing their religions, not necessarily because they actually believe in them, but because it's cultural preservation. Um, Ireland, everyone speaks English, right? 
but mm. they are mandating that kids learn Irish in school to preserve their culture. I mean, language is a bit different to religion. Yeah, I'm just saying that it's like it's there's different things that are intrinsically linked to culture like that. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I mean, the the um, like the British are in like the church, the British church and the crown are inherently linked, right? That's like their two yeah. parts of their imperialism, right? So it's I mean, like it, it definitely those, used those to be, but things, nowadays nobody gives a fuck about the British church. Which is, which is what goes back to my point. Yeah. That culture is forming independent of religion now, and we should be treating it as such. Well, I think because it always has, especially if you look at the history of America. It was mm. it was founded by people who like literally hated God. Yeah, and and uh, they still think these people still think that the Ten Commandments are the real Constitution or something. <laughs> like it all, it really comes about in the the seventies era with Billy Graham and shit. Yeah, like um, like Billy Graham wasn't just it, he, like he's going beyond culture where it's literal his everything dominion theology mm. is their everything it's more than culture then yeah it consumes every aspect of politics identity everything and it's entirely imperialistic at the same time yep well i think that's a good point to finish this one because we gotta move on um let's do gun violence yeah yeah there is a whole philosophy side to it and, and everything two key trump advisors have released their okay i changed my mind we'll go to trump's peace plan uh-huh their peace plan for ukraine but almost everybody thinks this is absolutely awful just why is every side mad about it and what would a better plan look like? I'm Paul, U.S. Army combat veteran. Let's talk about it. Okay, so this is a really interesting story. It originally got scooped by Reuters, uh, which does very, very clean, legitimate reporting. Um, but it's paywalled, so I have to use the Newsweek summary. Uh, but this is Ukraine uh, faces ultimatum in Donald Trump's advisor's peace plan. Now, I point this out because these are two former senior advisors to Donald Trump um, during his first administration, uh, Stephen uh, General Kellogg, and let's see if I can find exactly who we go. Uh, Lieutenant General Keith Kellogg and Keith Fred Kellogg Flight. and now, Captain Keith Crunch. Kellogg is, uh, both these guys are actually d older than dirt. Um, Keith Kellogg was literally born in 1944. He was a platoon leader in Vietnam. Um mm -hmm. And his only high-level diplomatic experience uh, was in the Coalition Provisional Authority.